Leo, it's me, Stormy, and here's your horoscope for May 2018. And Leo, get ready. That is what I need to say to you. You have got Uranus, our planet that likes to change things up. He likes to make things different, not just to make them different, because he's trying to get you on the right course. He says, hey, you need to innovate. You need to change here. You need to bring something more intuitive that has something that can pull you forward. Progress, right? You've got to pro progress. And he is coming into the top of your chart, your 10th house. So, oh man, Leo, from the career to the soul level purpose, you know, the things that we're out in the world doing, what should I be doing? What shouldn't I be doing? What do I feel called to do? All of these things, your public reputation, they are about to get a very big shakeup. And it's probably in a really good way, but they're going to be changes on the horizon for you. And this is the month to run and take advantage of them. Not to mention, you're going to have a whole stack of new beginning energy in this 10th house at the top of your chart as we're getting into the month here. We've got a new moon up there. Uranus is up there. I mean, we've just got a rocking good time. We've also got Mercury that'll be in there as well. So you've got an opportunity this month to really get something new cracking off. And here's the other thing. It's not just about starting something new. Something interesting I think that's happening for you is there could be an opportunity you thought just fell through the window. It, it, this is not going to work out. Whatever you were thinking about it. And it could represent itself this month. And now you see how to take advantage of that opportunity. So this is a wonderful time to be involved in some things that maybe you never even thought you would be involved in because that is the new direction, right? But here's the deal. Leo, I am raising a Leo. I know how stubborn y'all can be. So you are gonna have to get on board this month, Leo, with going with the flow of change because you have got to change. And I'm a fixed sign as well. I don't love the change feature, but this is the business, okay? Because you gotta change so that you can take advantage of these new opportunities. So I will tell you this month too, while you also got energy coming into a quieter space, that 12th house, you do need to be mindful in how you're reacting to the changes around you, right? Like you may not have a choice about the changes that are coming, but you absolutely have a choice about your reactions and how you conduct yourself. So keep that in mind, okay? All right, Leo, let's jump in here and get into the month so I can get you out and enjoying it. So at the beginning of the month, put a circle around this because it's just important to understand the energy. On the third of this month, we have got Mercury out of its shadow period. So now Mercury is full forced, Facing forward, we've got his direct energy and blessings, which means communications, decision making, things like that. The thinking, studying projects should be going a lot more smoothly now because Mercury is not in any compromising position in terms of its orbit. Now on the 12th, we've got Mars entering into the first part of its shadow period. And if you don't know what the shadow period is before retrograde or what the retrograde cycle is, what Mars is going to do is Mars is getting ready to pack his bags in this shadow time. That's what he's doing. He's slowing down. He's getting all of his things packed, you know, making sure he's got everything in his bag so that he can retrograde, turn backwards and take a nap. Then he's going to come direct and he's forward facing again, but he just got back home and he's got to use the other side of the shadow period to unpack his bags. So Mars is coming into the first part of a four piece phase, okay? So what this means is that he will be starting to slow down. So you still have the benefit of Mars. Mars is still Mars. He's pushing forward, helping you get life, energy, do things, get them done, right? Desire, movement, but they are going to start to slow. So what I would tell you is this is the time now, even before the retrograde, start moving with purpose, with intention. Why am I doing this? Why is this a part of my daily schedule? Why is this a part of my routine? Why am I eating this? Why why am I thinking this? Why am I limiting myself on what I'm thinking, right? So answer these kind of questions for yourself, but very much so move purposely this month, okay? <clears throat> and really all through the retrograde. On the 13th, we've got Mercury coming into Taurus, so starting to stack at the top of the chart. Then we've got on the 15th, a new moon happening in Taurus, and we have also got Uranus moving into Taurus at this time as well. So this is a packed punch full of new 
energy, new beginning, because remember at that new moon, we're going to plant these seeds of intention, right? What do you want in this area of your career? You've got to be flexible. You've got to be open-minded. You've got Uranus up here now. So whatever it is that you're wanting and you're wanting to move towards, the opportunities will be here and be available. You just need to be willing to take advantage of them and to be open-minded enough to allow them to come to you. Now, what I can tell you is there will be a shakeup in your career path with all of this energy up here, especially Uranus, okay? But I do feel like because Uranus is coming in at the same time that there's a new moon, this is ultimately pretty positive, but of course that will depend on your own individual charts. Now on the 16th, we've got Mars, our action planet, moving into Aquarius, so into your seventh house. So if you've got stuff going on in relationships, you wanna have a relationship, you wanna be social, you wanna make a new business deal, you wanna join some kind of new partnership, Mars is giving a lot of action here. And remember, Mercury is full on forward. So you've got some pretty clear thinking around this time, okay? You may be having some shakeups, but your thinking is pretty on par. So new relationships, relationships of any variety, definitely get some action and get some movement at this time as well, which is phenomenal when we're also talking about your career goals, right? When we get to the 19th, we've got Venus moving into Cancer, so lighting up this 12th house space for you. Venus and Cancer, they love to be together. They really enjoy each other. It's a comfortable, nurturing, sensual kind of energy. So anything you can do for yourself, like taking a vacation, take a time out. And vacation is a very, that's a vague word here. If a vacation for you means you go sit at the park for 15 minutes during your day, do what you gotta do to kind of nurture home, that quiet internal home. Because I'm telling you, the changes you're gonna be to begin to make this month, you're going to need to step back and breathe and reground and do something nice in the quiet space. Now, the other thing I'm thinking of is if you've got a project or something that you've kind of been working on quietly in the back over here, this could give it a little love, a little diplomacy, bring a little harmony to it, things like that. This is energy as well, where I will tell some of you, with Uranus moving to the top of your chart, if you are in any kind of affair or any kind of secret thing, secret behavior, even if it's an escaping behavior, that Uranus energy may shake you enough that you go, I don't belong here, right? So be mindful of that, okay? On the 20th, the sun comes into Gemini bringing new friends. This is the 11th house. Social things, networking things, um, new long range goals and plans. The sun is here bringing light, heat, life, vitality, right? So you're gonna wanna shine here. People are gonna wanna come shine with you. So this is great for attracting a new tribe of people or joining a tribe of people who are moving in the direction that you wanna go in as well, Leo. So friendship it up, really, truly. Now on the 29th of the month, we've got the full moon happening at eight degrees of Sagittarius. This lights up your fifth house. At the same time, Mercury is moving into Gemini into this 11th house. So one of the things I'm thinking of is, okay, this is the full moon in the fifth house. So yes, you could be dating somebody, seeing somebody is very casual or whatever, and it could end. The full moon brings endings, acknowledgements, and adjustments, right? It says there's going to be a shift or a change here. So that could be something that's going on. But with Mercury moving into the 11th, house as well, one of the things I keep thinking of is that maybe you're going to start having a conversation with a friend or a networking group or something like that to put you in the position to have actually a new beginning. It's like you've got to let go of these kind of childish ideas of how you were going to get things done and start to mature and join a new section. You know what I mean? Like this has got to move forward. For some people as well, this could be a time where you're having a baby, making a baby. The full moon is ripe, my friends. So if that's not something you're wanting to do, make sure you are taking every precaution that you need to, okay? I think that this is going to be a really interesting month for you. I look forward to seeing how you process and handle yourself through this because I'm telling you, as a fixed sign as well, this Uranian energy is so interesting to work with. So keep me posted in the comment section down below. I hope you get signed up for $3 Thursdays in May because we're going to talk about transiting Chiron in Aries through the houses, so you're gonna to wanna to know what's going on in your particular house and all of that good jazz. All of that's in the description box down below or of course at stormygrace.com. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next month. Bye guys.